national teams are usually the subject of ridicule at international tournaments with non-payment of allowances, dressing room tassels and others becoming more like the norm. The black princesses who recently played at the Women's Under-20 World Cup were at, at a point in their preparations kicked out of their hotel in Accra for non-payment while their bonuses are still outstanding. Also, the black satellites who came third at the Under-20 Men's World Cup are yet to be paid their bonuses. The ongoing sitting of the Commission of Inquiry set up to investigate the Black Stars' poor performance at the 2014 World Cup has been necessitated largely due to some of these mishaps. When this Unibank thing came, we thought it was the end of all our problems because, I mean, carrying cash, security, and all that. And in Brazil, I mean, uh, uh, my lord, as for cash, we've been carrying. Huh? Cash, yeah. we've been carrying. So what can be done different so we present a decent nationalistic front for our national teams? Why can the issues of bonuses ever be addressed with national teams for smooth tournaments? My name is Stephen Enti and this is today's big story. Today's Big Story is brought to you in association with nationwide PVC suppliers and fabricators of high-grade UPVC windows and doors. Now, the immediate past youth and sports minister, Elvis Apriankra, who led the Black Stars delegation to Brazil from uh, June 12th to July 13th, today broke down uh, the Commission of Inquiry investigating issues of poor management decisions and player indiscipline at uh, Ghana's camp. Uh, we don't exactly have him weeping, but let's hear some of the excerpts of uh, what happened today. When this Unibank thing came, we thought it was the end of all our problems because, I mean, carrying cash, security, and all that. And in Brazil, I mean, uh, my lord, as for cash, we've been carrying. Huh? Cash, yeah. we've been carrying. No, I mean, for the teams, I'm just saying the teams. If, for instance, um, Brazil was a one flight, you take authorization, you know, a letter. It's not illegal. It's not criminal. You take authorization letter and you declare it. So, uh, because out there, people think that oh, if you take cash, then you have broken rules. It's not true. You, you can take a letter of authorization. When you get to the airport, you declare it. But with Brazil, if you are flying commercial, you have to go through here, yes, Sao Paulo, and you don't know who is following you. You may not arrive, you and the money. So I, I want to put that in perspective. However, with all these inconveniences, we should just use electronic means for that. Now, when it comes to the um, supporters, again, that is where, um, when government said, they were not going to take supporters. And you see, my lord, I, I believe you are a football person. You know football without supporters. It's like, I mean, f you know, food without meat. Discussing the facts of what has been ongoing since the commission started, and we're trying to get onto the telephone line to speak to uh, Kobra Eboa, who uh, agreed to join us on telephone to discuss some of the major issues that uh, is are affecting the national teams and their preparations to uh, World Cups and international tournaments. Uh, so the key question tonight is, what can we do different to present a decent international image for our national team? So Ghana does in end up being ridiculed all the time at these tournaments. Uh, Kwame Jumar is here, a sports journalist. Uh, Kwame Jumar is here. Hey, Kwame, it's great to you could join us. I love your shoes. Thank you. Nice shoes. Well, I no have. one can <laughs> see it, but I can. <laughs> now, I, I'm, I'm worried. I mean, I do know that we are unable to discuss the, the, the substantive issues that are before the commission because of, um, you know, contempt issues. We could be in contempt of court. But, I mean, let's, let's take it this way. The, the national teams have had quite a lot of problems from 
I bet you pay late time and Tony of what time. There's always issues with, with payment of allowances here and there. What's going wrong? Well, I, I think it's obvious from the commission that a lot has been going wrong over the years as to you know, how things are wear down, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to monetary issues con uh, concerning the senior national team, the Black Stars. I think that uh, for a lot of people out there, they would even be wondering why it's got into this in the first mm -hmm. place. Because if, if you're going to be working, you're expecting to be paid at some point. You don't really care about where the money is going to be coming from. All you know is that you have done your job and then you need to be paid. Over the years, we've been made to understand that, that you know, when it comes to payments of the senior national team, you know, the budgets are generated by the Ghana Football Association who run the sport in here in Ghana. It's forwarded to the Ministry of Youth and Sports. That is forwarded to um, the Chief of Staff. They work on it. Uh, it comes back to the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Monies are raised and then payments are made. But you would notice that in the last 10 years since we qualified for the World Cup, a lot of money has also been coming in um, this time from headline sponsors and, and what have you. Mm. Uh, these monies may not be quantified to me um, after every year. Obviously, that's going to be uh, you know, within the purview of the Ghana Football Association Congress. But we do know that when it comes to payments for the senior national team, you know, it goes through that process and then the monies are raised. The issue has to do with when these monies are raised and when these budgets are passed. If they are passed on time, the players will naturally release, you know, would naturally get their monies on time. If they are not passed on time, then this is when all these issues that we now know mm. are, you know, come up. Is it, is, it, is it all because of lack of adequate preparations or perhaps as, as Team Ghana, we're not serious really? Is that what it looks like? Well, um, it, it's very easy to say that, but again, from what we've been seeing on the commission, it's, it's becoming very clear now that when these budgets are generated, they go through a process. Mm -hmm. Now, we know, you know, uh, there's, there's attitude, uh, you know, with all due respect to how things work uh, within, you know, ministry and government yes, circles. Yes. Sometimes it, it looks like something that would take, everything. maybe one day seems to take forever. And uh, when you speak to officials of the Ghana Football Association, they'll tell you, oh, we did this a long time ago, mm. and then the budget went to this, you know, this office and that office and that office. It had to go through that office and this office, and sometimes it seems to take forever. Because if you look at the, you know, evidences that have been given at the commission, in 2006, this was done. We didn't hear anything like this. In 2010, again, this was done. We didn't hear anything like this. The only thing that we now know is, you know, the different modes of payments, um, depending on who, again, you choose to listen to. Because, you know, uh, the lady from uh, Bank of Ghana gives us the impression that cash never traveled around and that these players were paid with. Uh, checks and all that. Mm. The minister comes, you know, the former minister comes before the commission. We take cash and all then the he time. says, we take cash all the time. Um, it's not like he was minister in 2010 and it's not like he was a minister in 2006. But obviously being a minister, someone would have passed this information mm. to him that mm. cash was done in previous years. That's mm. why it was done this mm. time as well. So obviously it means that there's something we need to get to the bottom into this. We need to get to the bottom of a lot of things. A lot of things. Do you think that the, the commission has been came up timely enough, considering the, the problems we've just uh, enumerated? I mentioned uh, the bonuses of the princesses, which are uh, still outstanding, and I also mentioned challenges with bonuses that the satellite has faced. Black Star in previous uh, matches have faced the same thing over and over again, but there were no commissions of inquiries. Do you think this, this is good? This commission well, came I timely enough? Some, someone, you know, passed a very interesting comment the other day and said, what if we had gotten all the way to the final and would have won the World Cup? We probably wouldn't have heard about this. Mm. You know, it's, it's because of how bad things went in Brazil that necessitated this in the first place. Because mm. if you look at the, uh, the terms of reference for this commission, they are not actually um, going to, you know, for, for the purposes of this discussion, not going to go too deep into the activities of the FA, but all the other things that transpired with supporters, with everything we had to do, to do as far as Brazil 2014 is concerned. So if you're going to be looking at it from uh, that angle, you'd say, yes, I mean, this commission has come at the right time. But obviously, you can't separate all these mm. activities away mm. from the mm. activities of the senior national mm. team because these are intertwined. And if you listen to the answers that have been coming in from the individuals who have been invited to the commission, everything they have said has tied the FA in in one way or the other. Right. Uh, we're still making attempts to get uh, Kwabrani Boa on the telephone, but uh, let's get to listen to some more of the uh, excerpts from the commission's sitting today. Follow-up meeting. Um, um, Miss Denda, I, you know, the secretariat is not... I, I didn't micromanage it, so I mean, I have to get a list and submit. All right. 
Now, did you contract some people to collect these conservative funds on committee days? Um, I remember we gave a letter to um, um, one company, but they could not raise any funds for us. So apart from that company, no individual was contracted to collect funds on committee days? No, my lord. Do you now, remember the name of the company? Um, I'll check. Check, okay. You, you let us have the name of that company. Now, did one Mr. Yao, Ampo for Ankara, play any role in the preparations for the tournament in Brazil? Uh, Mr. Yao, Ampo for Ankara was a member of the media and uh, communications committee. Now, how much did it cost Anaro to sponsor one supporter to go for the tournament in Brazil? Uh, we're thinking about the air ticket, accommodation, feeding, transport, and all that. Um, my lord, it's difficult for me to say it from the top of my head. We made projections. Um, by the time we sent the supporters, um, things changed. So, because all the costs was broken down, feeding, accommodation, aircraft as uh, a charter, you know, in bulk, I have to work it out. That we made projections, but as to the actual cost, I cannot say it on the top of my head. Honorable, um, when you do budgeting, you do budget per person before you get the bulk um, um, figure. Mm -hmm. So you would have known how much you were um, estimating for uh, a particular person for which the actual will come after the uh, plan. Do you have that information? Um, so am I to say the estimates or what it costs? The budget estimate that will come to actual. Yes, we estimated, we projected. Is that it projected in bulk or projected by person? We projected by person. And how much? We projected between 5,000 to 6,000 US dollars per person. Between 5 and 6,000? Yes, my lord. And that covered, covered what sort of items? Flights, accommodation, fee, all of it? Can you Everything, okay. Including match tickets. Now, yesterday you told the commission, Honorable, that the travel agencies have had to pre-finance the fee. Well, very interesting um, inquiry there. We're still trying to get, get Kwame Bois, who is a uh, a senior sports journalist and a sports commentator to join us. Uh, he, he agreed to speak with us, so we're waiting. So, um, Mr. Jumont, uh, you, you heard it. I mean, I do not want to for us to focus on what came up or what didn't come up, but, I mean, the key issues are that there are costs involved when we need to transport supporters to, 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 to international tournaments. Else, elsewhere in the world, what's the norm? Uh, for example, does the U.S. pay for its citizens to go and cheer up their national team? Hell no. That would not happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's, let, let's get this very straight. I mean, when, when it comes to people from certain parts of the world, what I know they do is that these guys plan way ahead of time. All these fans of the United States that were, let's see, in Brazil supporting their team, they didn't start planning the day before the World Cup. Mm -hmm. They would have planned because they would have tied in with their holidays and all mm -hmm. that. And these are people who are coming from high earning, you know, economies. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the PCI of, you know, people from, let's say, the United States, for example, you're looking at $50,000 plus. They can afford to spend that kind of money. And again, you're looking at distance. If you're traveling from, let's say, Washington or any of the 51 states in the U.S. to Brazil, you're going to be paying a certain amount. These guys plan, they work towards that. If someone is coming from Germany, which is also a very high earning economy, it's probably the same thing. But if someone is coming from Ghana, I think that what has happened with the Ghanaian example is this. For whatever reason, government decides 
to sponsor funds for whatever reason. I don't know why. If you're going to sponsor a fund, why are you doing that in the first place? Ideally, if you're a football fanatic and you'd want to go and see the Black Stars play a game here in Ghana, find you, your own you, you find your own way to the stadium to go and watch and cheer the team. Mm -hmm. That that's maybe the logical thing as far as I am concerned. Why government has taken it upon itself to do this? Um, I'm sure they would have the yeah, answer. We don't even want what, to. What what mm -hmm. what must be clear with this Brazil thing is that. I recall that prior to uh, Brazil 2014, um, a team was set up uh, basically to go around look for money. I recall mm -hmm. uh, some ambassadors were, you know, put together. They had to go out to look for money. I'm told they raised something in the region of about four million Ghana CD thereabouts. If that was something that the ministry decided to do and was able to raise money to take funds, well done. But if the government would have to dip money into their coffers every time to sponsor funds. That's a problem. I'm not that's sure a it's big sustainable. Problem. And, and I'm not sure it's sustainable. That, that's a loss we, you as a professional, would advise that we should I don't avoid. think it is sustainable. But, but, but Elvis mentioned so. at the commission that, hey, I mean, footballers need the funds to cheer them up. So if you can take a few funds there to cheer them up, it's also good. I mean, can we afford to go for a match and, for example, the, the, there's not up to 10 supporters? That would be bad, right? Yes, it will be bad. I mean, you need an atmosphere in the stadium, but there have been also so many other times where we played matches and there have not been, you know, anyway. as many Ghanaian fans to go and cheer the team. I, I think it's, it's y you need to be very careful when you're, you know, tackling this issue because, for example, if uh, Germany are going to be playing France in a World Cup qualifier, be it crucial, be it a World Cup game, whatever it is, I'm not too sure the French government or the German government will say we're devoting this money for supporters to go and cheer the team. Budgetary allocation. A budgetary allocation. If, through whatever means, monies can be raised, like in this instance, where the ambassador has raised a certain amount of money mm. to take care of funds, and the money is not directly coming from the coffers of government, I don't have any problem. But if we always have to dip our hands into government coffers to support funds. Now, look at what transpired yesterday. Um, we are told uh, that... Um, 612 people were supposed to be taken to Brazil. Mm. It goes up to 692. And we were told that it would cost up to about $6,000 to take uh -huh. care of one person. So you're looking at the 82 additional people who have come in, multiply that by 6,000. That shoots up. It's yeah. you, you would think maybe um, something around $500,000 is, is not that much. But you don't have really? an idea really? what $500,000 can do in Wale Wale. So I... I, I how should we be streamlining this? I mean, we've been back and forth to this issue all the time. What should Team Ghana be doing? What should the Ministry of Sports and Governments be doing? Should civil society groups and corporations and industries get involved also for us as a country to have a plan? I mean, because we will always have these events. Apart from football, this is only football. There could be uh, marathons, there could be long jumps, there could be Olympics. Shouldn't if we be thinking about a sports fund, maybe? Stephen, it's, it's very simple. If, if you don't have a plan, I mean, you're, you're on the road to failure. It's as simple as that. We are always going to be going for these events, as long as we qualify. For example, there's going to be Russia 2018, Qatar 2022. If we qualify, we will be we, there. If we qualify, we would be there. So it's very simple. When it comes to the World Cup, for example, at least um, seven months to time, all the qualifying phase is over. So that if you have seven months to raise as much funds, uh, depending on the number of supporters you want to go and how much it will cost per head, then you start those preparations. For me, it would only make sense. But if we always have to wait at the very last minute, like we did with the ambassadors, for example, I think it was just about a month or two mm. before the World Cup where I think they were put together and then they had to go around looking for money. If you don't have a plan, I mean, at the end of the day, government would then have to then dip its hands into its pockets mm. or into its coffers mm. to raise money to support the team. And again, like I said, I, I don't think that is that sustainable. Is sustainable. And then when it comes to, um, you know, the others, like, you know, planning for the various national teams and all, I think that when these budgets are generated by the, um, the Ghana Football Association and it gets to all these, you know, government agencies, if they could speed things up, I think that would also help. Did you go to Brazil? No. Did you have a friend who went to Brazil? Loads of them. How did they go? Well, some went uh, with corporate sponsorship. Some uh, went on the ticket of uh, government. Why didn't you go? Um, Your company couldn't pay. I'm trying to get a feel of what well, individuals of would course, consider when, it, when, when, when they it want comes to go to, when it comes and, to and, 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 and support the country. When it comes to an ordinary individual, 
if you want to go through your own means, it's up to you. If you found your way into, you know, the team that government sent, then you're lucky. You're lucky. If you're working with an organization like mine. Maybe you should like have an mine, NDC, uh, <laughs> party <laughs> if, if you're working with an organization like mine, obviously I'm not the only person in the sports yeah, team. Yeah. So um, it would be decided amongst mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, we can't take everybody there. We can't so take maybe um, in, in this case, we had, um, I think we had about five journalists. Um, there, were, uh, there was a cameraman, there was a, an editor. There was a um, uh, TV reporter. There was, you know, we have uh, several platforms. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we picked around just to make sure that there was representation, we'll representation from, representation you know, um, every platform. platform. And that's what happened here. What happened uh, with the other companies? I may not be on top of right. that. Right. We're still trying to get uh, Kobran Abwa on the telephone. And um, we're, we're discussing how we can present a decent international image for our national team so that Ghana doesn't end up being ridiculed all the time. Like... Uh, like it, it, it does when we get to international conferences. So let's let's take you back to uh, the inquiry sitting today and, and take a listen. And we'll be back and we'll try and get Kobe Naibwa on phone. Okay. Um, our first observation. Okay. Um, our first observation is that, uh, my first observation is that um, as you were saying, some players qualified the team, but um, they could not participate, and others joined. They didn't play the qualifiers. Now, all of us were anxious to get the most experienced and senior players. In doing so, I think we could have done, we could have managed them in this process better because unconsciously we created an entitlement mentality. Again, yes, because they did not play the qualifiers, they did not participate. People, other people played and managed to get us to qualify, and then we brought them in. Now, some of these players, even the local training, the local training in Ghana, they did not come. They were given permission to join the team abroad. Now, these are all little, little, little drops of water that makes a mighty ocean of indiscipline. Because on one hand, they will feel they are entitled. On the other hand, to the other players, will say, are they better than us? And so if you are not careful, you create two classes of players in the team. Um, so that is what manifested in various acts of indiscipline. Um, again, the, there is a code of ethics uh, of the FA. The FA has a code of ethics. and. Uh, uh, honorable, um, are you talking about what went well? Because let's go on what went well, all the organizations, what went well, 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 Kwame, let's, let's, let me finish off with you. Looking at all that is happening, the inquiry is expected to give us some answers. Uh, we cannot prejudge those answers yet because they have the powers of a high court, and so we can't say anything that will be prejudicial to the outcomes. But do you think <laughs> this is just one of those things? Would there be anything concrete coming out of this? I'm sure everyone who is watching this would want to see something concrete come out of this. Just uh, if this was just going to be a mere talk shop, then I mean, it's a waste of everybody's time, waste resources, of resources, and and all that. But if at the end of the day, whatever paper that it's going to be issued, I mean, we, we've been in this country where you know all these commissions are set up, white papers are you know uh, released after their settings, and when it comes to the implementation of what is captured, nothing really seems to happen. Mm. I've seen them at PT reports and the uh, people who should be punished if you like and uh, what still around. it's three years and uh, they're still walking around mm. freely in town and if you look at the figures that are being mentioned here loads of money do you have an expectation really um i have one i have a lot <laughs> but again <laughs> i wouldn't want to say something that would mean yeah i go there that's <laughs> right okay so <laughs> we're grateful for your time my name is Stephen nt this is where we we'll bring the curtains down and uh, we'll be back with an interactive segment and if uh, we'll continue where we left off stay with us